All right, so this is um, Raz, who, if you ask me who the best player is, I don't really have an answer for it, because I always, I always tell people that there are players that are the best at a specific thing, but you're kind of putting all of that together. Um, everybody has a specialty, right? Every really good player is good at something specifically, and there's somebody that's best at movement, somebody that has great flicking, somebody that's an incredible sniper or IGL or fragger, stuff like that, or great awareness or very smart plays. Um, but this guy is definitely up there. This guy is one of the contenders for one of the best players because his mechanics are incredible. And, um, well, not just his mechanics, his awareness as well. And I kind of wanted to use this fault to show that he gets 28 kills, I think. Yeah, 28 kills. And what I wanted to show with this vault is how he kind of uses unpredictability and quick peaks, uh, especially corner peaks, to just completely outplay teams. And that's something that I get asked about a lot. To say. All right, so um, right off the bat, right here, just on the start, this obviously is the kind of push that I would recommend people don't do because um, he knows that there's enemies somewhere on this building, but he doesn't know how many and where. He just knows that they're fighting and he can't see them and he's going out through low ground through the open to push. Uh, the reason he can still get away with this, obviously, this is something we talk about a lot as well, is he's, he's Wraith. If you're Wraith or Pathfinder, you've got a Q that can get you out of pretty much any situation as long as you learn to use it on time, right? Use it preemptively when you think you're going to die or take a bunch of damage or you're exposed to more than one enemy and you're about to get focused is fired um so that's that's why he's willing to push in here plus the smoke obviously obscures it but if this doesn't go well he's gonna queue out and so there's one guy above him he lasers him second opponent instantly queues out right and so he pushed up saw two people use his queue to get out so far pretty textbook right if you notice you're being focused by more than one enemy you use that oh shit button your queue as a wraith or pathfinder to get out pushes back in doesn't push below where they're expecting him there's already a teammate shooting from there plus that's where he jumped from right so that's where they're expecting him to push and he does something which they don't expect which is take a higher floor somewhere where they're not looking because it doesn't make any sense for enemies to be there that's of course exactly why he wants to climb up and push from there and you can see exactly what happens this guy isn't looking at it right so he may have been looking at the bottom he was looking at the street and Raz always tries to show up from an angle where they're not looking. Which you're going to see a, a lot in this game. And if I had to define his style in 1v3, and we looked at Shiv before and talked about how Shiv 1v3s. Shiv is very, very smart with baiting people into situations that work out for him. Uh, what Raz does, he does that a little bit as well, but Raz's style is, even though it has the, be the, the same goal... His style is best explained as like a one mag fighting style. And what I mean by that is that he generally puts one mag of damage on the enemy and then dips out, even if he did like 120 damage to the enemy and the enemy didn't hit him at all. And then he comes from an angle that the enemy isn't expecting for that second mag and that third mag. Unless he has something like a peacekeeper and he just corner peeks incredibly fast because he's just really, really, really fast with those flicks. Um, so that's what we're going to be seeing a lot. He's constantly changing up this angle, trying to shoot from angles where they're not looking at him, where they're not expecting him and so on and so forth. What's up, Lich? How you doing, dude? How's the grind been? Right here, obviously, he's a bit overexposed. It's a risk he didn't need to take. But he had around no health, so he gets away with it. Go for a sec. Let's see. What happens now? Right, his teammates are rezzing. He's going up. He heard some people fighting up here. Obviously, scouts from a safe position where he can instantly dip back down if things go uh, go poorly. So that in this situation, even though there's a lot of enemies around, doesn't have to use his Q if things go poorly. Um, he can chase here because there's a lot of cover to work with. But he knows that all of the enemies were on the right side, right? So there was one team out there on the tracks and there was one team going for behind this building. So he's probably going to be playing mostly around this left side area, right? Where he is less likely to get around, gets around it. He's very good at keeping track of where he last saw enemies and playing around that. So he's never going to dip to this right side of the screen. He's always going to be changing the angles on the left side. See what I'm talking about? One mag changes the angle to the other door. Couple shots, changes the angle to the other door. He's always doing this and keeping track in the back of his head of where enemies are. He sees an enemy push out to the right side and instantly uh, an alarm bell in his head goes off that he might get sandwiched, right? He might get sandwiched if he allows an enemy to go that far to the right or if an enemy goes around the building on the left. That's uh, behind my camera. You guys know what I mean. Around uh, the building on the back right there. So if he sees one of those two things happening, he's going to get some more range and he's going to try to counter that flank first so that he doesn't get sandwiched. So instantly when he saw somebody go to the right here, he peeks all the way to the right on the street, see that the person didn't actually push out there and now he can go back in and keep playing this building. So that's his awareness that I was talking about. He responds to that so quickly and knows exactly how far he can push up without being predictable. 
Right here as well, he notices that this entire team pushes on one side of the building. So what does he do? He first gets some shots on one side and then instantly changes the angle and gets height over here. Because look where they're looking. They're all looking there where he just shot. And he abuses that constantly. He's very, very fast and he's constantly taking a different angle to be unpredictable. Changing the angle once again and going for speed as soon as he um, emptied one mag. He doesn't keep fighting, he dips out and takes a different angle once again. He has in his mind which side all of the enemies are, right? They were, now they're behind him, but um, on that side of the building. And so he's, he's constantly trying to change the angle in such a way that he keeps looking at where they are. In every single fight. It's pretty incredible how he does it. Right, so he knows that there's some enemies somewhere in that direction. He hasn't actually seen them yet, but we're going to be looking at how he scouts here and how he plays this out. Getting some health, of course, first. Right, his teammate's being focused, so he doesn't have to do too much here. It's a free knock. Couple shots. Doesn't push, doesn't change, chase, but instead changes the angle. Right. Right, one enemy left from that team. Okay, so. He saw one enemy left, or at least he thought so, from the team. Right here, right? That's one person. Then, here on the door, after he gets a knock on the Bangalore, right now it's two knocked, one enemy, right? So you're always counting to three to figure out where the entire team is. And like I said, this guy has a very, very good awareness. So that's exactly what he's thinking right now, which is why he's willing to look here. And he's not instantly changing up the angle like he was doing before when there's multiple enemies alive. But then here, while reloading, a Pathfinder shows up. So now he knows that there's a second team, right? There's a second team involved in this fight because he saw three plus one, so it has to be more than one team. So instantly what he does is instead of fighting on this building where he's not sure where that Pathfinder's teammates are, is he dips out all the way where he knows it's relatively safe so that he can get all the enemies on one side of his screen, right? Or on one side of the battlefield. And this has to do with that awareness thing. That way he makes sure that he can't be surrounded, he can't be attacked by multiple enemies. And here he can play around the door, hopefully bait a couple damage on one. There you go, luckily they split up, which is very stupid. He's afraid of getting pushed by more than two people, right? And he knows that the fastest way for them to push him is to go through that door. If they go all the way around, he's already changed the angle once again. So that's why he dumps a grenade behind him. Right, this is the other place where they can come. Chuck's and is as well, free kill, luckily, because that guy doesn't run away from it. Instantly. Once he emptied the mag, changing the angle again, right? He remembers where the lifeline was. She was under there, attacking from this door, and the Bloodhound was attacking from that door. The Bloodhound is now dead, and the first thing he does is he doesn't push straight up to the lifeline where he knows she is, even though he could probably pretty easily win this fight against her with his superior mechanics. He takes an angle that she isn't expecting. Right, so he knew exactly where she was. She was still below that balcony, and he's abusing that. And of course, he does these things very, very quickly, which is why these people do not have time to respond to it, right? Unpredictability only works out if you do it too fast for people to respond to, like your footsteps or stuff like that. Here, obviously, he heard the rest, so that's why he was willing to push up, which he didn't do before. Because he had two knocked on this team earlier. All right. A nice squad wipe once again. So he identified when there was more than one team, got distance. Every time he got focused by more than one person, he either used his Q or got distance first, right, for safety. And then he never, never, never re-peaked from the same angle. He's just always changing up the angle and outplaying people with speed and unpredictability that way. It's very, very good. Plus, obviously, being good at keeping track of where you last saw enemies and where they should be. Now he has a peacekeeper. The second thing I mentioned he was very, very good at is corner peaks. This guy is very quick with his corner peaks. Um, some of his clips are pretty incredible. He abuses corner peaks so much with the peacekeeper. So keep an eye on that. He does it very cleanly. Even here with the door, right? For every shot, he quickly dips behind the door. Here as well on this guy. Look at how quickly he dips behind cover for the peacekeeper shot. And this is one of those moments where everybody on YouTube and Reddit in the comments, when they see you drop a 20 bomb, they're like, man, I could drop 20 kills as well if I had a bot lobby like this. Imagine for a second that you were this bloodhound and a guy dips in and out of cover and hits you like full on this quickly. You can be a diamond or even a predator level player and you would look like a bot as well. So this guy just having a very specific play style and having practiced that pretty much to perfection is why he makes these these people kind of look like idiots. 
It's just because he's so fast, they don't even have time to respond to what he's doing, right? And this is why practicing a specific playstyle is very, very worth it. All right. Right here, another team shows up. He doesn't want to fight multiple people when he doesn't know where they orient. He doesn't want to get surrounded, etc., etc. So once again, we see him use his Q to get out. This is a pretty open area where it can be kind of tough to get away. He knows that, so he pops his portal as well for that extra distance. And he also knows that there's a pretty decent possibility that he might get chased through the portal. His teammates are already down, so he can't get to his teammates with the portal. So now you're kind of looking for another way to use this portal such that being chased isn't dangerous. One of the things you can do is run into a doorway, like you had a doorway behind him there. Stop the portal right before the door and then close the doorway on the portal and start a heal and you can usually get a battery off. Um, something else you could do is start stop the portal like right here, for example, and then step backwards so that if they chase you through, they fall off. Gives you a little bit of space to work with as well. Those are a couple things that you can do. And what he does here is pretty smart. Um, he uses his portal mid jump slide, right? So he jump slides here uses his portal so his portal is hanging in the air but most importantly he keeps gaining distance he's got a lot of speed now so even though he starts his heal early because he's in the air he can get a lot of distance from the portal in case he's being chased plus the portal is in the middle of the air right so if they're chasing him now they fall down they can't get back into the portal and because he has cover to work with and they don't this is actually a, like a 200 iq portal placement right here if people chase it actually a very beautiful bait now sadly i don't think anybody chases him here but Still just wanted to point out, this is very, very smart play. And again, playing around the fact that he knows what is going to happen if people chase him. right? And that is something he's constantly thinking about. He's playing around with enemy attention very, very intelligently. All right. She was crouched. Free kill. Never want to stay crouched. It's a bad idea. And there he just styles on these people not much to say about it. but yeah don't stay crouched ever guys <laughs> remember that <sighs> right, let's see does something interesting happen here i mean obviously corner peeking in because he's using the pk more than one enemy um here he i think he's gonna climb up he is Right, so this is pretty smart as well. Um, he gets one knock, but there's more than one enemy, right? So he has made it a muscle or a habit, a muscle memory thing to instantly press his Q when that happens. We saw this at the start. We saw this when third party showed up as well. Um, so even though he gets a knock here and it's only one enemy left, that's just kind of automatic. And it's not a bad idea because that person's about to get first shots on him while he already has some damage taken. But what he does here with his Q is really smart, which is that as soon as you pop your Q right here, this guy is going to be aiming at that blue line right and you can't see him but he can see where you are going the only benefit you have is that you've got slightly more speed but if a pathfinder is this close you're very unlikely if you go let's say there it's very unlikely that you'll be able to really really get rid of him he, chasing you is going to be pretty easy for him so you're going to be mitigating damage for a little bit but you would have to time climbing over the wall right at the end pretty well and then hope that he doesn't grapple after you because if he does there's just no stopping him from, you know being the aggressor here which is not really something you want what does work is climbing on stuff when you're climbing on stuff obviously you're locked in a predictable animation you can get lasered pretty easily and that's something you want to avoid but if you're in your into the void ability you can't be shot you're invulnerable so suddenly it's a huge advantage to climb on stuff because if you can make sure your into the void ends on top of an object and they follow you then you can punish them for being in the climb animation instead of being the one that gets punished for it that's exactly what he does here. He waits for a second. I don't know if it is because he's thinking about where to go or if it is because he wants to end the climb exactly at the right moment. But either way, that's what ends up happening. It ends up working out perfectly due to this little bit of a wait. Right, So he waits for just a second, then climbs up. And the into the void ends right as he is on top of here. Right, So if he now gets chased, he ends up using the door, I believe, to heal or changing the angle. One of those. Okay. He changed the angle. But if he got chased there, he would have been able to get free shots on that Pathfinder for being in that climbing animation right so really really smart usage of the into the void there because he's in a location where he can't really get distance plus he's up against the pathfinder and you always kind of have to be conscious of the fact that running from a pathfinder is pretty hard if he still has his grapple he can chase you very very easily so you need to outsmart him instead of outrun him basically 
Right, as soon as he swaps to the Peacekeeper, he knows he needs to rechamber a shot, so he dips into cover and then goes for a quick peek shot. Once again, he's very quick with those. But he's made it a muscle memory no matter where he is. Even if it's like one pylon of cover to use or one doorway, he always uses a little bit of cover for those um, those rechamber times. Here, he doesn't have anything to corner peek with unless he pushes up all the way to the door, which obviously is a little bit risky. Uh, he's a little bit too overexposed here, and I think he shouldn't be taking this fight this long. As you can see, this doesn't go too well. So luckily, he does use his Q and get out. He goes past the doorway because, again, running away from a Pathfinder is very difficult. So you need to outsmart him. Using the doorway is a way to do that. And here he goes for range. Almost goes down for it. Luckily, he has an armor swap here from the earlier fight. But that was a little bit risky. I don't think he should have overexposed that long. And he fixes his mistake instantly. Goes back to baiting him in and corner peek, right? He knows this guy's chasing him aggro. Really, really quick corner peeks. Plus, he's using sound and his awareness to kind of already be pre-aimed in the right direction. And then figure out if the Pathfinder is going bottom or top. Also, he realizes... Even though he took a little bit of a risk by running out in the open past the door instead of healing with a the battery there. What he does do intelligently is he goes for a building again. He realizes that pathfinders are significantly stronger if you're fighting outside than inside, right? So going into that building because the enemy that's chasing him is a pathfinder is very smart here because then that enemy can't really use his grapple effectively and it's easier for him to just have him follow you on foot, which obviously is what Raz wants because he's always having people chase him on foot and chase, changing up the angle. Right, well, free kill because that guy was running out in the open and had zero awareness. But do notice how he automatically gravitates towards the car so that if he has to switch, switch to his peacekeeper and he has to dip behind cover, he can do that here, right? Right, Gibraltar, he's luckily low health, so it's a free kill. Even there, quickly uses that corner for the corner peak, right? So he, every time he's rechambering, every time he's reloading, every time he's doing stuff like that, he's using cover to make sure that he doesn't uh, take any unnecessary damage. Even in the case of a third party, like right now, if he had taken unnecessary damage against that previous team, then right now he would be in a you know more dangerous spot. And once again, takes three shots at the start of a fight, but as soon as he notices it's one more than one enemy, he doesn't want to get over-focused here, so he instantly presses his Q. And in this situation, as soon as you press your Q, the first thing you need to think about is where are you going to go? So we talked about it before with open areas like this, um, where climbing on top of stuff is one. If one enemy is chasing you, can be very powerful. Here, he doesn't really have that opportunity. The best cover he has to work with, you know, he probably doesn't want to go back into the building because it's too close. He can be chased very easily. Um, are these boxes so what i would do is probably dip behind these boxes and then from there you can make it into the building and have them chase you which fits his playstyle, having people chase him and then changing up the angle after every mag um that's probably what we're gonna see him doing here and instead what we see him do is even slightly more stylish and better right instead of going behind the boxes he actually knows his q is going to end out in the open so he used that little wall bounce to be a little bit more difficult to hit and mitigate a bit of damage while they're chasing him in all right, and then using the door as cover to heal. Very good. There's two enemies here, and one of them was going to the left, so he probably doesn't want to stay in this house for too long because there's an opportunity for him to get sandwiched. And again, checks the left, right? So this is just like the fight in the middle before. As soon as he sees the opportunity that he's getting sandwiched, he wants to put anti-flanker pressure on the person sandwiching him. Because if you do that, basically the enemy has isolated themselves and you can usually catch them out in the open. Right. By going up the staircase here, he's funneling them in one direction. There's no way for him to sandwich him anymore unless the Pathfinder is smart enough to grapple onto the balcony while the Octane comes from below, but that's pretty unlikely in pubs, right? So he can funnel them through a choke here, which makes it a little bit for him for, to like do a standoff and um, well, basically just make it predictable where they're going to come from, right? Plus now they've lost track of him and he can go back down and be unpredictable. Even while the guy is standing still, using corners. He actually made it muscle memory. You can see it right there. Using corners for those quick peaks. Instantly changes up the angle. The path did, did go from up top. Um, and here you can see the um, um, the benefit of speed, right? He's not wasting any time. He's trying to keep track of where people are. And because of that, the Pathfinder didn't see him coming. Even though he could hear him below. This is cramming 20 minutes before exams. What do you mean, Taco? Alright, last guy is the Jibby here. 92 flesh on the jibby that puts the jibby very low but still uh, he's probably going to be changing up the angle or corner peaking very quickly because he doesn't want to take unnecessary damage right all right he had gold armor so quick armor swap here that's nice so right now he's got two knocked one thirsted out of those two 
And then the Jibby, he had a very low health and still he didn't overcommit to the Jibby. So that he's not at a risk for a third party or anything like that. Um, mitigating unnecessary damage is a very, very good way to practice starting to play smarter and starting to play cleaner. And clean play is what really separates good players from great players. Um, so right here, he possibly is going to miss a kill on the Jibby just because he's playing very clean, which is nice. He's paying off. I really like seeing that. Right, using a portal and his Q. This is, of course, when Q still gave you, gave you extra speed. It doesn't anymore. Um, again, be thinking about the fact that there's an enemy behind you. And as soon as you drop your portal, it's likely that they might chase you. So something you can do is stop your portal right here, go through the door and then hold the door, stuff like that. Or maybe start your portal right here and then climb up on the balcony and aim at it. Um, he doesn't have grenades that he can drop on it. But those are a couple of the things that you could do. Or like he does here. Do a fancy wall jump if you've got incredible movement like Raz does, which instantly creates a lot of distance. Look at this distance. Even if the Jibby that's still alive comes through the portal, that's a huge ass arrow, <laughs> comes through the portal right now. He's created so much distance that it's not so scary anymore. Plus, it pushed the Jibby out in the open, right? Because he ended the portal pretty open. Um, so he can get some free damage in, hopefully. Plus, there's no way that Gibraltar is going to expect right after the portal is dropped that he's this far. So again, unpredictability is very, very powerful here. Because of that, he got some free damage in right there. Didn't quite crouch far enough to really block the sideline, but you saw that he was trying. All right. And just destroys the Jibby. Like, actually styled on him. But look at how he's following the same steps and really, really, um, really practice this style of play, right? He very clearly has a specific play style that he's abusing. And because he practices one thing so much, he's very, very good at it. Or not one thing, but one style. Right here it's a pretty open area, there's not much bamboozling to do, so he just goes off the fact that that guy was distracted, he gets free damage on him first, and he can get away with well, basically out-aiming these people, plus he has gold armor now, which just allows you to take a lot more risks, right, because it's pretty busted. I'm um, here, he heard somebody healing below, I think. I can't quite hear it. Yeah, he heard somebody finish a heal below. He has fast heal and full health. He knows he can get free damage on um, by dropping first with his PK, but he's already overexposed before in this VOD, and I don't think he was sure that whether there was more enemies here than just this guy. So I don't really like the fact that he doesn't just take the shot from up top before dropping down. I think this is one of the only moments that he's really taking very unnecessary risks. Um, that wasn't necessary. He still ends up winning it. I mean, obviously, he starts this fight with a 96 damage hit. He still has his Q off cooldown. So if more than one enemy ends up being there, yes, he can press his Q and get distance and just hope one of them isn't the Pathfinder. Um, but that's a risk he didn't need to take. That's one of the only times he wasn't playing that clean. That and his first fight against the Pathfinder, where we saw him overexposing himself on the door, right against the double tap if I ate Pathfinder. Those are the only two moments he could clean up a little bit. But other than that, played very, very clean. And here, just simply putting a little bit of pressure on that guy first and uh, then breaking line of sight. So basically just corner peeking again, but then with the rest beacon. What I want to point out here is I get a lot of questions about bad teammates. Like, oh, how do I carry bad teammates or my teammates keep feeding, blah, blah, blah. Um, teammates don't have to do shit to still be valuable because they're just a distraction. They're literally a meat bag that distracts your enemies. So right here, he spawns in a teammate that literally has no gun and no armor but this res is going to attract attention from the enemies right they're either going to be shooting this guy or they're going to allow your teammate to try and look for a weapon and back you up so you just want to basically wait in safety like behind this rock while you heal and then if they start shooting at your teammate if you hear the enemy shooting at your teammate that means you can get free shots on them right so even if your teammate literally doesn't even have a gun there's still value to be gained out of them just by playing around them intelligently and letting them take some of the aggro off you it never repeats the same angle. A little overexposed here, but luckily he gets good shots off. Plus he has the gold armor to play with. He notices that his teammate is getting shot here, right? So he can play around the fact that he's not taking the aggro right now, which is awesome. Plus constantly changing the angle again. Okay, he sees that they're both focused on his teammate. So look at this. Your teammate doesn't need to do any damage in a game to be valuable. You need to force value out of them, right? And that's exactly what he's doing here. He's allowing his teammate to take some of the aggro. And now he has a 1v2 that's pretty much free because these guys are looking at his teammate instead of looking at him. That's beautiful. 
And that's how Raz got 28 kills in a game. Which is fucking nuts. <laughs> He's obviously incredible. He does these things very, very, very quickly. But it shows you really how strong like developing a playstyle can be. Regardless of what the playstyle is. If you can execute uh, stuff that you've practiced very, very quickly. That gives the enemies so little opportunity to kind of outplay you. Or to react or figure out what you're doing. And that's really what he's abusing, what he's incredibly good at. Like, he owns this play style.